Thank you. Thank you so much, Helen, for taking the time out to talk to me today. We're here to talk about Mother May I, a film that marks your sort of your first real steps into producing. What was that? What was that challenge like? Yeah, like I said, saying, you know, I obviously can't speak to the performance or preparation for performance, um, but I did have two roles on this film and it was amazing to find a script and just be like, how and why and when and where can I get in involved in this? And I just honestly felt lucky that someone else didn't find it before me. And I, I truly did. I was waiting for the other shoe to drop. Like, oh, Lawrence is going to leave me for someone else to produce this. But he didn't. And there was talks of another actress at one point, maybe playing my um, the role I ended up filling, but um, they did, ultimately did not go that way. And being able to be a part of casting and finding Kyle Gallner is truly one of the best actors in our generation. Um, I I think he's the equivalent to the Dayton Hans and the Anton Yelkins of the world. So um, it was a pinch me moment that we got him and he believed in the, the script as, like I did. Um, but it was fun in that we also had to learn about budgeting, we meaning me. Um, I had probably looked at 3,000 homes over five states wow. uh, and learning the legality of how big of a crew can you not use Airbnb as your picture house, essentially, um, in a certain budget level that you you know have to go through other permitted ways of, of renting homes. Um, but we were a small enough crew and small enough budget that... I started my Airbnb hunt and looked on a few other sites as well, but they just, the price shot up. So after that many, like a six week search of literally 3000 places over five states, Lawrence signed on. And the first place he looked at, he widened it a little bit West than we were initially wanting to look. And he found this converted dairy barn that became our, our, our place. And uh, we could, we could not afford it and afford lodging. So we did end up like all just sleeping under one roof. Um, for five weeks in the middle of nowhere in this converted dairy barn. <laughs> I mean, how how does you know how did that impact? Because obviously you were filming during sort of like the heights of of COVID to a degree, and then you're all trapped. And I mean, it, from the film, it looks like it's it's pretty isolated. I don't know how you know how true well, that is. Yeah, it was very true. It was very isolating, and there was even a couple nights that we were going to go out to dinner, and everybody stood in solidarity with each other. That uh, yeah, we didn't we didn't venture out and on the if we got COVID we were so screwed and we didn't even we couldn't even afford that's not true we did have a testing guy come in we were also debating like if we don't if we do the isolation period we won't need to pay for testing if no one leaves the house like full quarantine style um but we did end up having a guy come in a couple times a week because we had one of the producers going out to get food as well right and so he would leave the home but no one else left the home. We were not allowed to. We would, uh, there was one Somalia in town out of this bit of more rural town. And as luck would have it, he had amazing sunset. So we had amazing wine after we would uh, wrap each day and we would watch, I think you should, I think you could, um, I think you should leave the Nick Robinson like uh, comedy. And then we all ate family style. Um, Lawrence cooks, I cook and Kyle cooks. And um, it was, it was quite fun. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds, you know, quite, quite nice really despite you know what was happening in the world but I mean it what was. a time you know what a time to be learning this sort of this all of these new things that you say budgeting location scouting yeah COVID was my first foray into producing so it was sort of like hyper producing of you know there's this whole other element of filmmaking that we weren't used to having that you know, people that have been producing for 10 years had it had to you know deal with so I'm sort of like that kid in COVID that started school while in COVID. I'm the producer that started during COVID. So um, that's all I'm used to is the, is the COVID protocol. But so we're going to be playing sailing from here on for, for any future producing projects. Cause yeah, you know. So financing's really tough. That's the one thing that really impressed me with our budget and how it was really Craig and his RDP and his lenses. I mean, that was a big, it was the location and it's the equipment and he and Lawrence figuring out how to get our shots and also having the flexibility and scheduling when there's a few enough actors and only one, one essentially one location. There's very few locations. Um, we had some flexibility in what we could film and when we could film it. Um, so that was quite nice. And like you said, you weren't necessarily going to be involved in front of the screen. You know, you originally were drawn to this for the for the behind the scenes role. What was it then about this this story and this idea that you know captivated you so much to to get involved? I love when a genre is turned on its head. 
And so I loved how quiet the film was. Mm. And as we know from The Quiet Place, you know, there's a lot of different kinds of being scared. And what you what isn't there, what you can't see or what you don't hear is is what's really terrifying. And as well as um, mother son relationships, I, I don't I don't know of a lot of mother son relationships depicted on screen. And so I, although this is not the most healthy example of one, um, I thought it was interesting to understand the mom, even as a producer, that we needed an actor that can see the empathy in this woman because some women have kids and I'm 36 and have no children. So I think that was a huge influence of even taking this on as a producer was there's all this societal pressure to have kids, but what happens if you have a kid and you get to this point where you're like, whoops, I wasn't supposed to have a kid. It turns out I'm just not really cut out for it, but you've already made that decision. You can't go back on that decision. And um, the fallout from a kid knowing they're not wanted um, obviously is pretty dire. And so this is all told through the lens of a romantic couple. And so I thought that was such an interesting way to approach a, a mother-son relationship um, as a writer. And that's why I, I like, I'm drawn to stories as a producer, especially because I love acting. But at the end of the day, if I have to be a part of something at this age that as an actor that I, I just was indifferent to paycheck. I'm, I'm very gracious to work or I got to be a producer and tell a story that I'm really excited about. I would not, this is not even the state of, of the strike right now, but this is like this idea that I would take it off producing in a heartbeat, heartbeat over, over the other way of, of doing something. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you, that's what you, ultimately you, left this, this project was, outside of um, any acting role I had yeah and they say that motherhood is something that sort of is explored on screen but it's very much more you're glad you had the kid <laughs> yeah the and it, is... yeah and, it, and it's like the mum is tends to be just the background person you know she's making the sandwiches or the breakfast you know she's not necessarily put into into the spotlight and I know for for a lot of actors they get to a certain age and that's all the all the roles that are available to to them but what I really like about Mother May I is that it's exploring motherhood kind of I feel like almost in a realistic way because none of us know how to be perfect children none of us know how to be perfect parents and it, you know this film exemplifies like the trauma of motherhood you know what can happen if your mother abandons you um the character of Anya she's kind of suffering with some almost inferior inferiority complexes because her mother is a therapist and wants her child to be perfect and then well, you've Anya wants a baby like she's just yeah. so obsessed with becoming a mother and then you've got this other woman who had the baby and wanted nothing to do with it and but it's having that it's like this idea of is it societal pressure that because she wants to love the kid so much or is there an innate desire to want to love the kid but she just doesn't and so i love that the movie explored when it doesn't work out mentally that that the mom couldn't connect because we always see the stories of the mom succeeding in the connection yeah. you don't see the other side of it yeah and i think it's, it's it's important to to you know represent that side of it because unfortunately that is that is something that some some parents, you know, women are are struggling with. So I guess that was again something that you really wanted to make sure. And just the fact that you know you've got a a male writer and director on this, but he see, he does sort of nail that female experience. You know, was that a lot of conversations with with people like yourself and other other female crew members? I mean, he had um, some of this was taken not the abandonment parts, but but just personal experience of his perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, and his partner is a former ballerina, a professional ballerina. And so they wrote this script, sort of order, orating it to each other. They had just met and were dating and they talked the film out on these like walks in the woods. That was hardcore 2020 COVID. Um, the entire, from the, from the meeting, the inception of this project and post was in one year. And they were engaged by the time we were shooting. So it was quite an interesting behind the scenes arc as well. Um, and you meet the two of them and they're just twin energies. It's it's really lovely to see. Um, and both are so hardworking and so intelligent. So it's 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 a quite a good match. And um, both of them took aspects of their own life and 
to put into the film. And, and, and Lawrence is a really sensitive guy. And I think it's important that we see more of those voices in males in movies, make, making those movies. It's not the, the Michael Bay's or, or even, the, even the David O. Russell's who are, who are emotional in their quirky Larry David sense, but not really, it's still deflecting to a certain point. And, and Lawrence really steps, you know, and I love Larry David. There's a place for that humor. I, I think it's hilarious, um, but it's the harder path is to take the one that looks you straight in the face. Yeah, and yeah, definitely. definitely. And I, li I like how the film is a sort of a, it's a secret three-hander. It's a two-hander on screen, but it's a secret three-hander. Um, and I know that some of that is is through performance, but a lot of it as well is, is through the editing. Like before we've even been introduced to our core characters, you know, there's just a few snippets. You see a, a cigarette butt in the in the ashtray, and you see a woman with her hair tied up. And these are all sort of little hints at uh, this character who we're going to meet in in some way. You know, was that something? Was that in the script, or was that a, an on location idea? Or did that it was on the script. Edit? Everything. He is a writer director to his core, and he writes for some pretty big time people. And this was his first foray into directing professionally um that I'm aware of and he he's from Columbia Film School he's really well versed in lenses as well so he and Craig the the DP had a very specific vision of how they wanted to shoot this um I got to be part of a lot of those camera test shoots um that and what rental houses they were going to and what lenses they were looking at again something that as an actor you don't get to be a part of and as a producer you do so um I really had a lot of trust in them because I was seeing it from every step before we started shooting. So yeah, it was very detailed. Every, every, I'm trying to think we added anything. And I can't, I'm sure Lawrence is going to be able to remember this better than I will, but I'm sure we added something that wasn't in the script. I wanted to add a couple scenes that weren't in the script, but we, that did not end up happening. Um, but I'm trying to remember there was something, but I, I'm skipping, it's skipping my mind. Uh, but no, yeah, for the most part, everything was very, very well thought out. Lawrence had Lawrence had a shot list before our first meeting. Wow. For the, oh no, he is meticulous when it comes to organizing. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. I mean, I like to think I'm organized, but I'm definitely not. I'm definitely not he that had, organized. Yeah, organized. <laughs> and his deck was incredible too. I remember that that was a big part of uh wanting to be a part of this film was that's great you can put it on paper. Does that translate visually? And I could tell by his deck. I think it did, even though those weren't his shots. It was just his inspiration. And I was like, okay, and yeah, no, I can I can see that you see it. Yeah. And so you've moved out into producing with Mother May I. Is there any any future career path going going further than that? You know, do you have any aspirations oh, to maybe yeah. direct something one day? Not I do, I would maybe direct a short film or something. I have really no desire to direct because I just think if there's other people out there better than you, then you should let them do that. Um I might eat my words later if I, I think it from, well, and I can't speak to the performing aspect, but, you know, you get snippets of what it would be like to direct or you'll have your own thought of something. But as a producer, as a creative producer, you get a little more hands-on of, hey, do you want to get this shot? Or, hey, you want to get this shot? Um, I got to be a little more vocal about the shots we got um, from different angles or, if we, you know, or, hey, if we're shooting this scene, it's only going to take take this amount of hours, we might have extra time here. Can we get a different angle from this perspective? And so that was fun to be a part of those conversations. Cool. And, you know, should you, should you produce anything in the future? You know, are you gonna, are you gonna keep Kyle in mind? Because like you say, he gives it a fantastic performance. In yeah, this he's so good. I, he's got another film coming out called The Passengers that I'm very excited to see. Um, I think I can, I can advocate for other actors that have, have projects coming out, but, but not, not myself. Um, but yeah, it's, he's, I, he's, like I said, I, he's one of the best actors in our generation. And so I would be overjoyed if I got to, you know, I, I think of him often when I look at stories to, to adapt. And um, right now I'm, I'm in the writer phase, like trying to find a really trustworthy group of writers that want to work with me. And um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now is, is, is all writing and all directing of, seeing people that would be good combos together for a writer director in itself 
Nice. And I guess sort of my final question would be, you know, you're obviously known for your time on Teen Wolf and I guess there's going to be a lot of fans of that. They were going to seek out, you know, Mother May I purely because, you know, your name's attached to it. Are you excited for them to see this other side of your talents? I am. I think I think hopefully they they'll like it. You know, it's, I, I grew up on that show. So and it was my launching pad to I think producing is something I've always, always been drawn to. Um, never directing, but producing. And so I'm getting to do what I really set out to do from the very beginning, which is tell a story and tell the story the way that I really want to tell it. So if somebody's a fan from my past, I'm so excited that like, I feel like I'm showing something for the first time. I feel like I'm at, you know, I'm really debuting for the first time where I'm like, this is, this is my vision with the, this director. I hope you guys enjoy it. So I feel like it's an even more personal gift that I get to give to people. Yeah, well, it's it's a fantastic debut. I caught it at Brooklyn and have not really stopped thinking about it. So everybody um, should should watch this film. It's it's so good. That. it's a very personal, like vulnerable ride because a lot of people think of their own loved ones um, in this film. Yeah.